Before we get started on the battery box, what are people's thoughts on the new workshop colours? The black roof, I'm not quite certain on yet, but it is growing on me over time. Anyway, building the battery box was this week's challenge. I started out by having to get the battery cell holder prepped and ready to build the battery box around it. The cell spaces had to be made in two halves because of my printing capabilities, so I made these little brackets that would hold the two together. They've been bonded in place, but I did have to file them down slightly so they were flush and there was no raised edge on the spaces. I then had to measure the height of the spacer to make sure all of the cells were pressed nice and deeply into the spacer. Because if any of them were raised or not quite seated, it wouldn't be a nice level, even surface to make the cell case around. Once I was happy with the cell itself, I then moved on to the insulative layer. So this was going to be a layer between the aluminium case and the cells themselves that would A, insulate it in case of any issue internally, and B, give it a little bit of protection if it was ever in an impact. So I narrowed down that material to two options. The first was a really dense polystyrene, and the second was PVC board. So I actually worked out that this, even though it was extremely dense, you could still compress it. And that's no good. The weight of the actual cell would compress this over time and then it'd be room inside to move around and jiggle, which would cause damage and issues, which I definitely don't want. So I settled on PVC board. It's really, really hard. You can't compress it, but if it has a really big knock or an impact, it will dent and deform a little amount. It's also very good at temperature and it will also flex a little bit. So it seemed to me like a good material to use for this. Now I ordered this material pre-cut to the correct size but it turns out they just weren't any good. So I ended up having to mark them and cut them all. Fortunately, they cut really nicely with a standard blade. I simply taped it around the cell so I could offer it up against the aluminium. Now once again, I got these aluminium bits pre-cut and fortunately they were absolutely spot on. Same thing with the aluminium. I taped it to the battery cell so I could then tack it in place. It was time to try and do a bit of welding. I haven't done any aluminium welding in 18 months. And even 18 months ago, I was not very good at welding aluminium anyway. So it was definitely gonna be a bit of a challenge. Welder set up, I wanted to do a test piece. Firstly, to get the settings dialed in, but also just to give me a bit of practice and get used to it again. I definitely started out with a wrong ampage, I moved too quickly, and I used too much filler rod. But it worked out okay in the end, and I was happy where I was, so I moved to the box. I started out by doing single taps all over the box. I know it's not a good idea to weld a battery box with cells inside, so I did the smallest tack and I pulled it out, checked the temperature and made sure there was no heat damage on any of the bits. It ever so slightly started to heat the PVC board, but it was okay. Now my biggest concern while welding the box was warping due to the heat. Aluminium welding creates a huge amount of heat. So what I did is I tried to do 30 to 40 centimeter welds all over the box at different spaces. This would dissipate the heat the best I could. 
after doing several of these, I decided to check the box to see if it had warped at all, and it looked like the top plate had moved slightly. So I decided to leave it overnight, let it cool down, and find out what it was like in the morning. And I was right, the next day it had warped ever so slightly. I had a bit of a panic, but I ended up getting a motorcycle jack into the case, pressing the two halves apart, and it worked an absolute treat. I could fit the battery cell in nice and snugly, and it was nice and square. Perfect. So I ended up leaving the jack inside and welding the rest of the box, and this worked really well. Also, with the amount of welding on this box, I really got into it, dialed the settings in, I was quite happy with how the welds turned out. And I only ended up using two filler rods to use the whole box. This was ideal, so it doesn't mean there's loads of cleaning up to do afterwards, because I didn't need to add that much material. With the battery case welded up, I needed to smooth off those welds. It had to be smooth and flush so it could slide into a case in the actual bike so there couldn't be any raised surfaces. And of course, I was going to do this outside. I wasn't going to ruin my freshly painted workshop. It was a really coarse cut and disc and it quickly took off the tops of the material. I didn't take it all the way down to the case because I actually wanted to use a flappy disc, which is a much softer and nicer way of grinding away aluminium. I don't have any at the minute, I'm going to order some during the week. I then used a very small flappy disc on a drill just to take off any sharp edges so I wouldn't cut myself. And then it was time to assemble it. And as I was doing that, I realised it had warped slightly again. But last time I fixed it with a jack, so I did the same method. I slid it in and pressed the two halves apart, and it worked again. I really had to jump on the jack this time, but it worked. That left me with a really nice and tight fit, which means the cell is not going to bounce around, it's not going to have any vibration issues inside the casing, which is exactly what I wanted. And I was really happy how it turned out. Really nice and snug, nice square box that will mount lovely inside this frame. Next up, I need to make the end for the box. This will be removable, so if there's ever any repairs need to be done, I can do that. It's also going to house the two multi plugs. I've opted for two different plugs. A large Deutsch connector for the charging circuit. and a proper electric vehicle Amphenol 120 amp connector for the main battery feed. I'm not certain how I'm going to make the end plate just yet. I don't know if it's going to be 3D printed or if it's going to be made out of aluminium. All I know is it's got to have a handle and it needs to protect these so they don't get broken if they get knocked at all. But that's a job for next week.